Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's going to be another trying to fix video, another video where I've bought something faulty off eBay and then I try to fix it. Now in this instance in here, if it is what I think it is, then it's not just one item, I've got a whole job lot of items in here. So uh, let's open it up and see if it definitely is what I'm thinking. Now as always with these videos, please don't take it as advice, please do not copy me. Most of the things you see in this video will be done incorrectly. It's just interesting to see how other people go about fault finding. Right, okay. Yep, this is what I thought it was, a load of fake, well not fake, you know, bootleg consoles, you know, the kind of like uh, bootleg Mega Drive consoles and stuff. Oh, there's loads of uh, loads of chargers here. What's the price I paid be worth for the worth it for the chargers alone. Okay, that's interesting. They're two point five millimeter ones, aren't they? Not three point five. They're small. Right. Okay. Uh, that's a three point five. So they're audio cables to connect it up to TVs and stuff. More chargers, audio cables. Right, Mega Joy 2000s. Right, well, that's a Nintendo 64 copy. Uh, well, that's interesting. Do you know, I haven't got a clue what this one is. I don't know. I mean, is it going to be clone Nintendo games on here or uh, or what? I really don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Looks like the cover's missing. Oh, no, here we go. Here's the cover for it. I think this is going to be yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Right, I have to Google a few of these to see exactly what they are because I've never seen that before. This one is in its box, so uh, Sega Mega Drive Portable Player. Actually, that looks like that looks like it's going to be in pretty good nick. Let's have a have a look on the inside. Ah, there you go. I'm pretty sure these are the ones that they have in Argos. Maybe the Argos. Maybe this is like a a kind of cheaper copy of the ones in Argos, I'm not too sure. Looks like it's got its own little rechargeable battery. Right, okay. Again, interesting. I mean, that's complete there, isn't it? Even comes with a little pouch. What else we got in here? Oh, there's loads. Right, check out this. Right, okay. Play power, TV play power, right, and television. So this must have all the games built into it already. Little football game, there we go, it started already. Oh, here we go. Right, not sure what's going on there. Doesn't look great no matter what it is. Right, so these must be like the PSP copies. Comes on. Doesn't look like it's displaying anything. Right, okay, well if there's enough of these, then hopefully between all of them I'll be able to at least get one working, if not more. So it's another one, just a different colour. PXP3. So these are all the ones you see on eBay, you know, the the, uh, the PSP copies. No sound at all, okay? Well, if it was, if everything else was working apart from the sound, then that would be hopefully an easy change for uh, one of the other ones. The problem is not all of them have games with them, so uh, most of them do, though. Right, and these are all just the same, but just different colours. Make strange, I don't know. Make strange something. There we go, and that is the box empty. So I've got quite a few there to, to carry on with. So obviously, these, let's put all these together. So between them, I should be able to get something working. And then we have this on its own, that which I'm probably not going to spend any time on, and uh, that there, and this one here. I'd like to get this one out of all of them. I think I'd probably like to get this one fixed the most. And then. Uh, yeah, and then one of these. I'm very interested to see what this thing is here. So I'm probably going to Google that just to see, uh, you know, to see what that's about. And these are just very basic, uh, very basic instructions. All the instructions are 
Oh, here we go. We have got one of these as well. So, uh, yeah, I think this is, I'm looking forward to doing this one. We've got a lot to, lot to work with. So I think what I'll do is I will be filming it, but I'll be just fast forwarding through all the testing and then I'll stop at any interesting bits. So let me show you what I paid for all these. I got them from eBay and I paid £12.99. So I thought for £13, it's well worth you know the fun of just, just testing them to see which ones do and don't work. I know none of these are going to play like the original consoles, but they still might be a little bit of fun. Right, OK, uh, it was free postage, so that was, uh, that was all. And there was 12 consoles in, in total. So, you know, you're paying uh, what you're paying there, just over a pound each. So £1.10 each, or £1, whatever it works out to be, £1.8 p each, so uh, very cheap, and that was, remember, including postage. So he's just done a little list here. It all seems very genuine. It just says, you know, what each of them are. So, for example, this Mega Drive one here, it says works fine, but personally, I feel that the graphics are a bit choppy compared to the actual Mega Drive. Not sure if this is normal or not. Okay, so that could well be normal. And then it says that this one here says uh, I put in some new batteries but seems to be no power so you never know that might be fixable this one the Mega Joy one this is the one I'm kind of interested in it says here I'm unable to test this as I don't have the right TV cable right okay but yet when I turn that on it doesn't come on and there are batteries in here maybe the batteries have just run out luckily I do have these cables these are just like you know the phono cables so uh, looks like it's just going to be mono which is uh, absolutely fine so one for video and then one for uh, audio as well. I also call them RCA cables. And then it says the eight ones of these, the PXP3. It says these are all faulty. They have different issues. These come with chargers and AV cables. Even with the issues, most should work fine when connected to the TV. And then it just says about the football game. Briefly tested this and seems to work fine. I didn't play on it properly, so I'm not 100% sure. So it looks like there hasn't been a huge amount of time spent on it. But that suits me. So uh, it'd be interesting now to see at the end of this how many of these are actually, you know, how many of these I can get working. So uh, yeah, that's it. Let's uh, let's get tested. Okay, I've uh, been testing this one and to me this is working absolutely fine. It needs to be charged up, which is understandable, has its own little rechargeable battery. Uh, I've just played a few games on it and it feels okay. Shinobi felt a little bit choppy, but uh, the other games I've played has been okay. Remember these are emulated games, so they're probably not going to behave as well as the original ones. I think there's nothing wrong with this. It's even got this original little uh, screen protector thing on here when you buy it new. So uh, yeah, I think this is all good. It's working on the TV there. If I unplug it from there, you will see it will come back to here. I mean, it is what it is. You can't expect the D-pad and the buttons to feel as good as the proper Mega Drive controller because, you know, the cost of these things are very cheap. Obviously, in this setup here, I only got it for a pound, which is fantastic. But I haven't looked up the price on eBay for, uh, for them, but I'm I'm thinking they're going to be around a £20 mark, maybe £20, £25, £30. So you can't expect it to be absolutely amazing. They're not going to have put the research into it, into the buttons, like, for example, Microsoft with the Xbox. Uh, so with that one, it's working. So let's, uh, let's try testing some of the other stuff. Right, okay, with these we have a variety of faults. I'll go through them as I try to fix them. But, for example, on this one here, it works on the TV, but yet it doesn't display on here. So, uh, as well as that, you can actually see that the screen is off-center. You can see it's going off to one side. So, out of all these PXP3s, actually, none of them work as they are now. They do all have faults with them, which is exactly what the seller said. Uh, quite a few of them are dead. Some of them, like this one, works, but there's no display. This D-pad is very, very hard. You have to press it hard. Uh, what's this one here? Dead. Crack display. This one's got a crack display, so when you turn it on, it's uh, it's all leaked. 
Yeah, but maybe I can take a display out of one of the dead ones and put it on here. I don't know how modular it is or whether it's all soldered in and stuff. But uh, yeah, okay, so that's them ones. There's going to be quite a bit of work to do with them. Now let's try this Mega Joy. Right, so with this Mega Joy now, I've put batteries into it. it. Looks like you can also play it via an adapter, but with batteries in, it's definitely not doing anything. I'm not sure if I've got any 9 volt DC. I might have to have a quick look for one of them. This should work with batteries anyway. Right, and lastly we've got this thing here. I don't really know if I'm going to spend any time on this one. Right, okay, when I press down hard on the screen I can see that there's actually loads of combinations and there's a goal over this side and a goal over this side. Uh, but yet none of them are actually displaying when I'm uh, when I'm moving it around. So it looks like it's only working this little bit of the screen here. Hence the reason I haven't got a clue what's going on. Maybe I might have a look at this. You never know, it might be an interesting one. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, so that is it. We've got lots to get stuck into. I think to begin with, I'm going to... I think I'm going to start on this one here and then work my way through them. So what I'll do is I appreciate that this video is going to be quite long and there's probably a lot of it that maybe you don't want to see. So uh, what I'll do is I'll put down in the timestamps what, uh, you know, uh, down in the, the description there, what each one is and then you can go straight to the one you're interested in. The thing that's going to probably take the most amount of time is these PXPs th uh, 3 here. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of time on each of them because obviously you can buy these working for £10. I'm not going to spend, you know, like a day on each one getting them working because it's not really worth it. I think I'm just going to swap a few things about and see if I can get some working ones at the end of it. I might spend a bit of time on this one here because I'd be quite interested in this one. So uh, let's start with this one and see if we can see what's wrong with it. Right, so we're going to take this apart and just use simple fault finding techniques to see what's wrong with it. For example, I can test continuity on the leads between here and inside here. I can uh, see if there's any voltage coming out of the batteries. Check the switch here. You never know, it might be something simple. So uh, I've done a quick Google of this and I think, I'm not sure about this one, there was a blue one and I think it came with, I think this comes with 25 games. And uh, I never had one when I was younger, but uh, I suppose I would have been really too young for it. But the Intellivision came out, I believe, in 1979. But looking at the reviews of this on Amazon, a lot of people don't like it. They say that it's a lot different than the original games that they remember as a kid. But still, you know, I'm not doing a review of this. I just want to see if uh, if we can get it working. So let's take it apart and let's see what uh, see if we can find anything off here. So hopefully, we will be able to get some of these things uh, in this job lot fixed. Right, first things first is obviously to check the battery compartment. Now, I can see a little bit of corrosion down in the corner here, but yet the rest of it actually looks more like gum, but the rest of it looks clean, so all the contacts are in fact clean here. Aha, well straight away you can see now that these two wires are not connected to the, uh, the battery compartment here. So, that Looks like that's the problem. I just need to solder these to one. I mean, there might be other faults on it, but uh, the rest looks nice and clean. It doesn't look corroded or anything like that. If anybody's interested, that's what the inside of it looks like. You can pause it and have a good look. Interesting that it's got shoulder buttons. Right, okay, uh, yeah, so there's definitely definitely corrosion here. So I'm just going to clean this up and then I'm going to re solder these back on so I have to work it out. It looks like they used to go here and here. So let's have a, a quick think about this a minute. Those two are joined, those two are joined, those two are joined, and those two are joined. Maybe they go up here, hold on now. What I'll have to do is I'll have to put the batteries back in and uh, see where the voltage is coming out. So 
So we've got four batteries, they should be uh, 1.5 volts each, so we're looking at six volts. I believe on these rechargeables they're 1.2 volts, I really don't know if that makes a difference or not, but four times 1.2 is going to be uh, 4.8. So let's go to voltage DC, let's go on to the two dirty ones here because they look like they're probably going to be it. Yeah there you go, 5.1 volts, yeah that's only half, 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 yeah so it's these two here. Right okay so I just have to uh, double check, let's have a think about it a minute, so it's going to be, I'm just looking at the length of the lead, so it's going to be, yeah that's going to be too tight, so it's going to be black to this side and red to this side, just looking at the length of the leads, so in other words I have to solder the black to this one and the red to this one here. Do you know what, I'm so pleased that I redid that because I can tell now that they're a nice strong connection and I've done it properly, it's gone through and through the hole again so uh, you know, if you have a look there you can see it goes through here and then through that side and I've snipped it and this side again snipped it up here so it just goes through, back through and then soldered on. Right, right, let's see if it works now. Let's see if it turns on now. No, still nothing. Wow. Well, I'm going to uh, put it onto the TV just to just to see, just in case, just in case it's the LED that's gone. It might still be working. It might be just the LED that's faulty. All right. There's definitely nothing happening there, which is. Uh, which is strange because you know you've seen the wires when I took it off they uh, they were disconnected so you would have thought that that would have been the only fault. Uh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try some different batteries just in case. I know those batteries are reading, but I just want to try some new ones. No, nothing there. When I do it on and off, it does the the light flickers on just for like. Um, you know, it's split seconds, but that's just probably the action of turning it on and off. Maybe it causes a bit of static or something. Right, okay, uh, let's take this apart and have a look at the switch, do some fault finding on it. Yeah, so it's reading 6.6 .6 volts at the end of the wire, so definitely this side here is okay up to this point. Okay, I'm not 100% sure, but the switch has like three prongs, and it doesn't matter which way I go across it, I'm not getting continuity across them. I wonder, could it just be a faulty switch? Maybe I'm testing it wrong. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the batteries back in, and I'm going to try to short, short across the uh, contacts, and see if that little LED lights up. There we go. Look at that. See when I short across these two, it's uh, it's lighting up. Let me see now. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what I do with the switch; it's not lighting up. I'm wondering if it's a faulty switch. Maybe I'll put it onto the TV just to see. But if you look here, right at the bottom, we have. Like forget about the outer contacts because they're just kind of like to solder the switch onto the board. But if you have a look, uh, if I go across these two here, 
Can you see it's lighting up? But yet when I do the switch it doesn't do anything. Uh, I think I'm going to put it on the TV, short across here and see what comes up. If it comes up then maybe I can, I don't know, maybe I can unsolder the switch and have a look at it. I haven't actually got any switches to hand but I would be able to get one off eBay very cheaply. But uh, you never know, I might be able to fix it, it might be just a, a bad or a dirty contact. Let's pop it onto the TV, let's do this live. Okay, so the channel's on the correct AV. I've got, uh, I've got the lead from this Intellivision plugged into it. So now let's short across it and see if anything happens, comes up on the screen. Yeah, there we go, play power Intellivision. Excellent. So that is it, it's a faulty switch. Oh, that was a nice little fix. Well, it's not fixed yet, but nice little, uh, nice little bit of fault finding. Right. Okay. I'm going to unsolder this switch now and see if I can uh, see if I can fix it. There we go. It's come out. Right, excellent. Now we can work on just the switch and we don't have to worry about damaging anything here. I wonder whether it's just had a bit of corrosion inside. Do you know what? If I take this apart, what's going to happen is it's going to be hard to get back together and it's just going to wobble everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try to put my multimeter across it now, see if I'm getting any readings now that it's unsoldered. And I think I'm going to dunk it in alcohol and uh, the IPA stuff and uh, you never know that might just free it up by me doing this constantly it might free up the dirty contact that's in there. Yeah, right, It doesn't do anything no matter which way I do it so uh, I'm going to put it in some IPA. Right, I've seen a, a few little bits of dirt floating around the bottle of the, the bottom of that bottle cap, so you never know. It might have freed itself up. Excellent, look at that. Right, so it's working there now. Now let's put the switch the other way and go on the same two contacts. And now it's not. Excellent. Let's try that again. There we go. I think that's going to be. I think that's going to be okay. So uh, I think I'm just going to dry this out properly, and then solder it back in, and hopefully this thing might now be working. Let's solder back on now. Let's pop the batteries in and see if that light comes on. I'm going to use the older batteries now. No. Is this still not working? No, it must be the batteries. That's weird, isn't it? There we go. Okay. Off. On. Excellent. I don't know if it's a great connection, though. Yeah, I'm not very happy with that connection there. You can see it's coming on and off and I'll wiggle it, see? Well, I'm going to spray some uh, contact cleaner in there. Right, so this is the stuff I'm using.
just turn that on and off to try to clean those uh, corroded terminals in there. That's better. Now look. Yeah, and even when I wobble it, it's staying on. Yeah, that's better. All right. Okay, so the rechargeable batteries do work. I was thinking because there was enough voltage in them. Yeah, it's definitely behaving itself now. Well, right, I'm going to put it back together. All right, so here we go. Let's turn it on. There it is, working. Right, okay, let's uh, make sure that these... Oh, here we go. Sounds working. Now I don't know anything about these games. Let's just... Oh, skiing. Do you know what? That looks just like... That looks just like a game... Was it on the Spe Horoscope Skiing? What was that? Spectrum 48? I think that was a Spectrum 48K. Horoscope Skiing. I'm sure that's what it was called. Actually, there's not... Oh, there is quite a few games. Okay, let's do the skiing one. 1981. Oh, I quite like this. Start. Right, skiers one, two. Okay, let's just do one slope one. So there's all different slopes to choose from. Oh, wow, there's loads. 15 course. One, two. Let's go to that one only. Okay, so there's two courses on each of them. Right, let's just start. I presume this is going to be the simplest one. Downhill. Oh, here we go. Do I have to go through the red and blue? Ah, you have to dodge that. Right, okay. glad it's working and a nice fix you know first of all it was the wires that were broken but then it turned out it was the switch and the switch is working perfectly now with that little bit of contact cleaner yeah so uh, happy with that one so let's move on to the next one I think next I'm gonna do this Mega Joy 2000 so uh, let's take a look at this now just in case it is dodgy batteries I am going to uh, change the batteries out in it because I had a load of batteries left over from Christmas, you know, Christmas decorations, and I was just testing them, you know, to see how much voltage was left. But because I'm doing fault finding now, I want to make sure that I've got new batteries in here. Hard to get out. Oh, we've got a red light. Right, okay. Uh, red light, so that should be that should be displaying on the TV. Why is that not displaying? Right, I say this one's gonna be a hard fix because it's got power to it, but it's not displaying on the TV. So uh Unless, of course, this lead is too long. Let me try a shorter lead, because this lead is about five metres. I wouldn't have thought it would have made a difference, but just in case. Well, that is, these leads don't fit properly because they need to go right into the, uh, right into the groove. But it definitely made a noise there. Right, let me have a look around for other leads. Mm, they might, yeah, these might just fit. You can see they, there's not much room around it, so you've got to get the ones that have the, the ground that sticks out. Let's put these two together.
No. Oh, here we go, look. Bad connection. It's a bad connection here. I'm sure of it, because when I wobbled that, it came on. Then again, it went off again pretty quick, didn't it? Definitely did something. Turn them both off. Now I'm going to turn this on first. Then the TV. No, okay. Right, let's uh, again take it apart and see if we can see what's wrong with this one. Okay, so let's take this thing apart and see, uh, see if I can work out what's wrong with it. I'll tell you what I like about cheaper electronics on eBay. Because they're cheap, like for example those uh, PXP3 or whatever they're called, you can buy them like for about, I think it's £10 and that's with free delivery. So it's not worth people's while fixing it. I mean I'm doing it because you know it's interesting and also remember I'm doing it for the YouTube video so most people wouldn't do it because there's not really much money to be made in selling them on again. But what I like about that is they're all genuine faults and I find that it's much more fixable when something hasn't been looked at before. Because for example now around the house I actually have quite a success rate of fixing things otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. And uh, yet when it comes to the kind of stuff I buy on eBay normally I can uh, fix you know very little things on it and it's because other people have already looked at it and it seems to be a bit of a dumping ground for things that have already been looked at and then it's so easy to say don't know what's wrong with it maybe an easy fix when the truth of the matter is most of pe most people know full well what's wrong with it and they know that it's either too hard to fix you know or it costs too much to fix or you know they don't know what's wrong with it and they uh, but they've already looked at it so it's never doesn't seem to be often an easy fix but with stuff like this because it's not worth anybody's time doing it then it does tend to be easier fixes like for example that Intellivision one how nice was that a couple of soldered wires and then uh, a switch and you know what thinking back I wouldn't have even had to unsolder that switch would I I could have just used that uh, that con uh, that contacts uh, you know the contact cleaner stuff without even unsoldering the switch and it would have been okay right I need to get a long thin screwdriver for this top one Ooh. Right, okay, that's that out there. Right, all looks very uh, very nice and clean. So these are the TV outs up here. And that just slides out. Okay, and we've got a couple of wires soldered here for the, uh, the battery. Right, that doesn't really give me much room to to play around with it. Right, nothing's jumping out at me. It's all, you know, all looks okay. I'm wondering whether the ports here are actually faulty. You know, maybe it's not making a contact with the inside. 
but that should be easy enough to check. That's what I'm going to start with by doing. I'm just going to plug in a couple of cables here and I'm going to do a continuity test between the end of the cable and these bits here just to see if it is making a contact. I'm just a bit, I'm just wondering why for a split second or one or two seconds it came up on the TV with like a blank picture. Right, again, I'm just going to continuity. Right, so it's all these outer ones are like the, the shield, the ground. Now let's go in. Yeah, it's definitely making a contact. Right, okay, well, it doesn't appear to be anything wrong with the connection. I'm just going to wobble it around the place, see if it comes and goes. anything wrong with that. Now it's got nothing to do with the switch because when I turn it on the red light is coming on. It's more to do with the uh, the signal out to the TV. See what I'm thinking is inside these, these must be kind of the equivalent of chips. You can see all the traces go into them. It must be just a cheaper way of doing it. Looking at the capacitors, and uh, they don't, no obvious sign of like leakage or anything on them. Okay, I'm going to have to give up on the Mega Joy 2000, unfortunately. You know, out of everything, this was the one I wanted to get working the most. Don't know why, I just wanted to see, you know, the old uh, NES games. So basically, what I've done is I've uh, tested the diodes. They're all testing OK, to my knowledge. Voltage regular, testing OK. Uh, transistor, testing OK. Capacitor and capacitor, testing OK. Went across the, the resistors and they're testing OK. I'm not 100% sure what this means here. Can you see next to like C5 it says 50p? But again, I've taken them all off and I've tested them. This one is shown as a capacitor, but these two are shown as resistors using my little tester, even though it says like C4 and C3 there, so not too sure. Uh, this thing here, I can't test. Don't know what it's for. To me, it looks very similar to a radio controlled, uh, you know, like transmitter and receiver, the crystals from there. So I don't know why that would be needed in something like this. But unfortunately, I've spent enough time on it and I've tested everything I can test. So maybe it's a fault with something in here or possibly with something in here or here. I do notice when I put the batteries in and turn it on after a while, this gets not hot, but a little bit warm while everything else stays cool. So maybe there's something shorting out in here and obviously I'm not going to be able to fix that. So unfortunately, I have to give up on this one here. Right, let's take a quick look at this little football game here. So we know that some of the uh, some of the screen is not displaying because I can see when I press hard on it, I can see that there is a. 
can see it displays nothing but when you hold it down it looks to be displaying here but if I go along here you can see that there's other stuff happening but yeah it's just not displaying when I move down low so we'll just have a little look just to see if there's anything we can do with it oh look at that it's got a little motor in for rumble interesting all right, okay, let's see if we can get to the screen because I, I presume all of this stuff's working. It's just the actual screen itself. All right, I just want to see how the screen is attached. Oh, okay. Wow, right, okay. So we've got uh, the contacts here that look very clean. And then we've got this here. Okay, what I'm thinking is... Yeah, it must be like this uh, level here. You see the... See we've got like the pink foam and then we've got sandwiched in underneath this what looks like metal. Let me get my multimeter out. I just want to see if, uh, if that's conductive because it must be going through to this layer here you see maybe it just needs to be cleaned or maybe the LCD itself is broken I mean, it has to be conducting through. Oh, I can see closely now. There's a, uh, there's loads of little lines on it. So if you have a look very closely, I don't think it's going to pick it, pick it up on the camera, but there's actually loads of lines going across these black bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put different pressure on it and see if it uh, if it livens up. Also, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to line up. Right, okay, because I don't know where it needs to go on these, I'm going to have to place it back in its cover. That's clever. Look, the little card at the back is just a picture of the football screen. So you could put anything back there <laughs> if you wanted to customise it a bit. Right, I'm going to put pressure on this. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a clean. Right, okay, so it's even worse now. Oh, there we go. If I press hard. Oh, look at it. There we go. Look, can you see? Time 158. It's to do with pressure. Look, let me zoom in. Watch this. Right, so there's nothing there. But then if I press really hard... Can you see now, you can see stuff down the bottom? Right, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get some IPA and I'm gonna clean it. Let me take the batteries out. I'm gonna clean it and then uh, try to see if there's any way I can apply more pressure to it. It definitely is lifting off a bit of, uh, I think it's dirt, but it might not be. It might be, I might be ruining it by doing this. And maybe, look at that. Can you see that? Well, I'm going to do up the screws and see what, uh, see what happens battery out again. Excellent, look. Look at that. Oh, I can work out what's going on now. Right, okay, let's put it back together and uh, let's see if everything else is working on it.
Okay, so the whole screen lit up there, and uh, yes, look at it, I can see a goal. Let's go to start. Right, let's just show you a little bit of gameplay on here. Let's go start, so I'm shooting up that way to the right hand side. Not sure how you tackle on this. Oh, I've got it now. No, I haven't. I haven't even seen their goal yet. Yes. Yeah, I scored. Right, okay. That's a good time to end that one. On to the next one. Right, okay, I've got a mountain of these to get through. So I think what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to look at the ones that are, are dead, just to see if there's, there might be a common fault throughout. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do a bit of mixing and matching. So for example, the one with the smash screen, let's see if we can get that replaced with maybe a screen from one of the dead ones. That battery reminds me of the one that's in the, the BitBoy. I'm not sure if that's swollen up a bit. Let's get another one that's dead. Oh, this is dead as well. Right, okay. I'm just going to swap it with a good battery. So this one has no display, but it works on the TV. Ah, oh, look at that, the battery's flat. So maybe the dead ones have a bulging battery. Maybe they were overcharged or something, but if you have a look, can you see if I put them here? So look at that battery there, you see it wobbles? And yet this one's flat, and again this one wobbles. So let's put a good battery in here and see if it works. Yeah, there we go.
Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video and I think it was quite a successful one. So everything on the left hand side here has been fixed and everything on the right hand side hasn't been fixed. So let's just quickly recap what we did in the video. So to begin with, I tried fixing this here and it was just a case of bad wires going to the uh, battery and then also it was uh, a faulty switch. So now that's working. Nothing wrong with this, this worked from the very beginning. So in my opinion, it was worth paying the 12 99 just for this because I think it's kind of nice. I was playing it last night and I was, uh, you know, happy with it. This one here, remember this one just, just had a bad display. Well, now that's working fine. All that needed to be done was the LCD needed to have more pressure put against the circuit board and also just a little clean as well. Now that's displaying. Here we have one, two, three, four, five. Five of these are now working. To get them working, all I had to do was mix and match the parts. So I've got three over here that I can't fix, but these three, uh, five here are all working fine. I'm short on, I think it was one battery. I could look into these batteries, but they're bulging, so I'm not really happy charging up a bulging battery. So I would rather just have, that one's not too bad, but these two, especially this one's very, uh, this one here is very bulged. So uh, yeah, they're, they're, although it's working, you would need to put a working battery into it to make, you know, to make one of them work. But still we have four of them that are working fine with the batteries. And uh, yeah, all we had to do there was mix and match the parts. So sometimes I needed to solder in the speaker wire so they were loose, but apart from that, it was just a case of really just uh, swapping things around to get the working ones. And as well as that, we've got a load of adapters and leads and stuff. The one I wasted the most amount of time on was this MegaJoy 2000. Unfortunately, I you know unsoldered loads of things from that and I just could not get that to work. And with these here, I spent a bit of time looking into them one of these screens definitely looks to be okay. I think it might be this one here. So if the screens ever break on this, I'm pretty sure that's a good working screen. One screen's cracked and the other screen has an issue where it's just backlit, lit, but there's no actual display on it. But again, I've got plenty of spares over on the table and here as well. So if these ever needed to be repaired, there's loads of spares to repair them. So I think for 12 99 in this instance here, to me, it was a bargain. I know a lot of people don't like these products because they're not as good as the original products, but considering they cost me £1.08 each, then uh, even if you were to divide what I've got here and divide it by, uh, you know, £12.99, well, what's it going to work out? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's going to be, uh, what's that, £1.50 something? So it's still not a lot of money to pay per item. So for me, I really enjoyed doing it. It was nice to have a kind of simple, like honest repairs, you know, real faults that other people haven't tampered with before. It was just, it was just, it was just nice and easy opening something up and just seeing a wire loose, solder it back on, and then everything's working again. So uh, yeah, the one that challenged me most was definitely this one here. Unfortunately, I think it's probably one of the chips gone on that one. But uh, to me, still a very interesting lot, and I'm really glad I bidded on this one, and I'm glad I got it. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you might have learnt a thing or two. I certainly did, especially with the components in that Mega Joy up there. So if you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more how-to and trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.